Good afternoon, folks. My name is Paul Burkhardt. I'm the founder and CEO of the Senior Companies located here in Troy, Michigan, and we also have a location in Fort Myers, Florida. I'm joined by our Director of Communications to my right here, Corey Lear. Hi, Corey. Hey, Paul. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. And to my left here, I have a very special uh, obligation and honor to introduce the Macomb County Prosecutor, Peter Lucido. Peter, how are you? And thank you for joining us. Great to see you both. Thanks for having me on, Paul. Great to see you again, Corey. So yes. take, take it away because yeah. we had a lot to talk yeah, about. Yeah, thanks today. for joining us. I'm glad that I was able to be in town for the launch of our uh, our new division at Viso, which is relative to everything that we're going to be speaking about today and was able to jump in. Corey usually handles the podcast. So I'm really glad uh, to be able to join you here today, Pete. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, senior scams that are very prevalent in society today, unfortunately, and that is uh, very much in our wheelhouse and what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. The type of things we hear and see are very, very disturbing, and I know you're going to spend some time with our viewers and listeners today and discuss a lot of that and why this is so important to you and how you develop this wonderful program. Growing up in an Italian family, just a small Italian family, Eight kids, <laughs> mom and dad make 10 on the east side. We always learn that family comes first because they're the only ones that are going to be there when everybody else scatters and runs. And, you know, doing the law business for over 30 years before I served as a legislature in the House and the Senate, I did introduce bills that dealt with seniors. And the reason why I did is because seniors are the greatest generations that ever lived. We all know it. We all had a mom, a dad, um, grandma and grandpa's. And they are the ones that made our lives and cut the pathway for all of us. So getting into why it was important, it's because we're living longer. We have better health care. We have better medication. The doctors are more inclined to do certain techniques and treatments that were never done before. So if they're living longer, we have to protect our wealth and the safety of the seniors. So with that being said, I thought that, you know, if you're going to live, you might as well enjoy your golden years without getting ripped off. And the scams part of the program today that we're all going to focus on is how to prevent them, what type of scams they are, who are doing these things, and what can we do as good stewards to make sure that those elderly do not get harmed or hurt. Sure. And isn't it a joy uh, that our parents and elderly looked after us and helped us grow up, and now we kind of turn the tables and we try to help them be in a position where they, they gain some vulnerability with age just because of the decline of aging, right? But we certainly try to put them in, in the best and most secure hands as they do go through those golden years you spoke of. So w what is it, Peter? And I'm sure you <coughs> see, you see the, the whole gamut of, yeah. of, of crime and of abuse in all different forms, and it manifests in a number of different ways. What are some common ones that uh, our listeners and viewers can learn from and how to avoid and, and, and be in good hands? So I put together a program <clears throat> booklet, and it's called Scams. Scams. And if you all see that there, Stop Crimes Against Macomb Seniors. But it's just not Macomb Seniors. It's all seniors. And in the booklet, <clears throat> it lists some scams. And it talks about identity theft telemarketing. It talks about home improvement fraud, mail and internet fraud, and caregiver fraud. And we have some numbers here that you can go ahead and contact individuals uh, to make sure that you can opt out on certain things. But I want all the listeners to remember, when I grew up, we had a bank called Standard Federal Bank. And some of you have used it, and some went to Manufacturers Bank. Those banks have folded into other banks today. But they used to fill out a three-by-five card. And today you'd have your name, you'd have your date of birth, you'd have, you know, where you live. And it would just have the germane information, including a Social Security number, but they'd lock that away in the bank at night. But today, you can fill out a form online, and all that information that you're giving them mm -hmm. is critical because they share that information with third parties, and that's how the scam starts. So what can you do about it? Nothing unless you can tell your Congress uh, representative or your U.S. senator, look, I don't want my information sold. So on the bottom of your form, it says that we have the right to sell your information. And that's how they make a lot of money. Who gets that information are individuals 
So you take out a bank loan, for instance, and they know that you're taking out a certain dollar amount, buying a house a certain amount. Mm -hmm. They can now track back to you and say, hey, guess what? We're going to sell you a BMW, a Cadillac, because of the amount of money that you're showing as your income. Mm -hmm. they, they, they really shouldn't have that right to do it, but you're not going to change that law unless somebody goes ahead and puts it into place, which is... Don't sell my information, trade my information, give it away unless I tell you you can. So you're opted in until you become opted out. And that's what the book talks about, how to opt out, how to say no. I don't want you sharing that information. Another way is people drive down the street and they're following these 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 Amazon trucks all over the place because that's the way you shop today. You shop online, it comes to your house. If you don't like it, put it back in a box, put a sticker and off it goes. That's right. So really what you got to remember is, when the truck gets followed, they go ahead and see the package put on your porch if they know that you're home or not home at a certain time. Most people are creatures of habit. They leave for work in the morning. They know that they're, nobody's home all day. They'll go up to your house and steal the package off of it, open it up, and now they've got more information, which is your purchasing habits, who you are, where you bought it from, all that stuff. But the other way is the mailboxes, and that's why people use Lock mailboxes. If I go to your house right now, Paul, and I go ahead and take your mail out of there, go steam it open, look at all your bank statements, and everybody knows when that comes, the first of the month, and start to look at your accounts, checking, savings, it's all listed on there, how you title that account. These are things that are out there where it doesn't take much. And guess what? I can still put your mail back in your mailbox and you won't even know it was gone. This is just a few of them that we have in the booklet here that says we got to put a stop to it, and here's how. Put a lock on the mailbox. When your packages, leave them over there, and you'll pick them up. You'll pick them up. Don't put them on the porch because those are called porch pirates. And if they take it, those pirates are going to get arrested, and I worked on that bill up at the Capitol. The last thing is, let's face it, if you're going to take out anything and go online and do it, you're sending it to a third party that you don't even know who it is. Mm -hmm. You don't even know if it's securely stored. You don't know if they're going to go ahead and transfer it or sell it themselves and make their own money. Be on guard, be vigilant, and when you're buying online, be careful because a lot of those websites are ways of taking your information. Sure. And, Corey, I know you have some good questions. We'll get to that in just a moment. Peter, relative to what you just said, identity theft and fraud is so common in day-to-day in, in -to -day life today. Yep. These criminals are uh, very uh, deceptive and, and mm. brilliant in a very evil way. Uh, I think the common, ordinary, everyday person thinks about maybe someone of a younger age that gets identity theft. Does your office find that these folks actually uh, assume a senior's identity who may be suffering from memory issues or cognitive decline, and they see it as a perfect target to go do that? That's a great question. And I'll tell you, uh, the, the scams don't discriminate. It's just not seniors. It's all cuts and walks of life. And it's always those seniors, though, that have the extra time to go on, you know, their laptops, their iPads, their cell phones, and have the time to engage and talk. more and talk, yeah. right? They, yeah, they're lonely, some of them, and they're more than happy to talk to somebody. Yeah, but, you know, there's identity theft <clears throat> warning signs, Paul, within the book. And, Corey, it, it's also giving you how the preventative steps are, are, are. We have that in here. It's Look, everybody, it says step step. warning signs. So when you zoom on in on that, it says it, identity theft warning signs, and then the preventative steps. We could spend two hours, and I do have, <laughs> not two hours, but <laughs> I do have a senior scams program that I go around to the senior facilities. That's all they got to do is call the prosecutor's office, and we'll go out there. We'll talk about this stuff. I will have other individuals in the arenas that you're talking about, mm -hmm. such as your business and everything, we do that for a reason, because if we can educate the seniors or their family members, yes, because they're the guardian angels. That's they right. They really are. They're the ones who are going to say, don't be answering the phone. Yeah. Don't put your information in on that email. Don't reply back to that. I mean, they're so smart with these scams now. You get it. They figure out what bank you're from, like you mentioned, getting your mm. statements, and they send it like it's from Chase or it's from whatever bank. And it sometimes they're hard to differentiate. Even like even me, I'm like I'm mm. looking two or three times. <laughs> I grew up in St. Clair Shores near the water, and I used to go fishing. And what <laughs> they're doing is the scammers that are out there are fishing for your information. That's right. And how they do it is exactly like you said, Corey. They go ahead and send out 
a email and all of a sudden you think it's somebody that you know or somebody mm-hmm. that is asking you questions and they're baiting you, yep. then they fish you and try to mm-hmm. get as much information. They do it also. If you go ahead and you start to look up like golf clubs, I did it once on my own. I went through my, you know, my internet and I said, you know what, I'm going to look at golf clubs. And all of a sudden I'm looking at golf clubs. Now, <laughs> an hour later, I'm into something else and golf mm-hmm. clubs are popping up. Nonstop. They yeah. are buying algorithms, which means if you're going there, they're going to go ahead and send you information. Don't be one that they're going to fish for your information. Mm-hmm. Let them swim away. It's a lot easier for you later on. Sure. I think I read something, too, that said if you search in private, like if you look on your phone, that you're, yeah, mm-hmm. you're less likely to be, uh, to have that happen to you fishing. where you keep, yeah. W- yeah, you know what? I, 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 and even, even if the, you do, you say... Uh, private or open or this and that. Yeah. Too many people have been taken from the fact that they give the information. I was one of them. Hey, look, the prosecutor of Macomb County, Pete Lacito was taken, but I didn't get it far enough mm-hmm. where I pushed print. I looked at shoes and I like these shoes and I, you know, looking at them and I'm saying, wow, these is a good price and everything else. And I'm doing this and all of a sudden my daughter looks over and says, dad, if you call right now, that shoe company they're going to tell you they don't have that site. And I said, how do you know that? She says, this is a phony baloney site. You're going to push your information through, including your credit card number, yeah. your PIN number on the back, the four digit, mm-hmm. and the name that appears on the card. You just gave them carte blanche to start charging on your card. Yep. Gave them everything. So there's countless ways, and, and we're definitely going to put a link up, folks, on our <laughs> website, uh, of course, with uh, prosecutor's uh, approval. And it'll be a great way if you can't get one of these in your actual hands, in your possession, we'll have full access to that. And, Peter, there's so many, but what what are, in, in today, we're 20, 2023, unbelievably already, what are, would you say, the top three that they seem to really be highlighting and targeting as the most successful from their standpoint? Great question. And, again, you know, this is important to learn. What is it that they're doing? It's changing ever so often, first of all. Yeah. So what we saw a year ago isn't so much today. But before I get to answer that question, we have a senior crimes unit. And it was implemented specifically because the age of the senior is growing in Macomb Mm -hmm. County. We have more seniors in Macomb than we ever have. And for that matter, we wanted to make sure we have stop gaps in place to protect them. We also have a consumer fraud unit, which is the general unit for all fraud that has happened. But the three most, three most that we see are one, telephone scams. For whatever reason, my mom, 92, when I told you, Paul, uh, you know, she's still alive and I love her dearly, but mom, you got to stop picking the phone up. I showed you how to use the caller ID. It'll have the number and the name. I told you also, if it looks like a number that you don't know, don't pick it up. Let it screen itself. Don't engage because they're going to be fishing. Mm -hmm. So telecommunications is one. Two is the mail fraud. The mail fraud. They're pulling things out of your mailbox. If you can get a lock on your mailbox, that's one way. And last is the porch pirates. This is really crazy, but they get the information. And, And I know a lot of it is done by electronics today on the iPad cell Mm -hmm. phone, as well as your computer. Do yourselves a favor. Be vigilant of who you're sending the information to. Talk to your mother and father, grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt. Tell them these things that are in this booklet. Mm -hmm. Stop the scams before they get you. And COVID taught people to go more and more through the use of technology, including seniors. Yes, Some people think that they're not, they're not up to speed, but they are more and more up to speed. You'd be surprised how many of you seniors are out there on Facebook, Instagram, you know, uh, yeah, whatever absolutely. else is out there, LinkedIn. Reality is we couldn't get into the stores that we wanted to, and we only had a buy online, and it pushed us yep. into those positions. Sure. Completely new, new way of, way of life. Yeah. I say this is so prevalent. I was, I was doing a little bit of research before you had come and it said that in 2021, over 92,000 victims over the age of 60 reported losses of $1.7 billion. But you know what That's the interesting That's crazy. Part? I know it's crazy, but Corey, the more interesting part is how many didn't report? That's how do you, right. How does the senior say, oh my God, I feel ashamed. I'm embarrassed. 
I can't believe my own family took me like this, or I can't believe I was that naive. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, everybody, please call the police, mm -hmm. make a report, let them get notice as to what happened to you. That's the only way to prevent it. And if it's a loved one that has done this to you, they should have never did it. But more importantly, now is the time to say it because if they drain you out of all your savings, where are you going to live? How are you going to pay your bills? Right. Why should you be depressed in that you earned it, you keep it, and live the way you want to? You are the one that deserves it. And Peter, when something unfortunate happens, whether done by a stranger or, as you mentioned, and we see this too in our work, unfortunately sometimes by their own family member, where exactly do they call? Do they call their local police department? I mean, a township, a city, a village, or something that's uh, of a larger scope in federal? How, how do they go about doing it? Do they just pick up the, the phone and call the Troy Police Department or the Macomb you know, Township Sheriff? Perfect, perfect, perfect question. Again, what, what we have is I don't take your call because you first have to have it investigated. Mm -hmm. We're not an investigatory tool in the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office. We're the ones that bring the charges based on the investigation from the police. So they would call their local law enforcement officials. And like you said, in the township of some of these, they have their own, like Clinton Township has their own police department and Shelby Township has their own police department. But in Washington Township, they use the Macomb County Sheriff's Department as well as Macomb Township Sheriff's Department. All you need to do is reach out to that police agency, tell them that I think I'm a better victim of a scam, and you'll know it when you get your bank statement, and it doesn't look the same that it looked right. like last month when they took your money. Plus, you got some deadlines to make sure you notify your bank and indicate to them immediately, it looks like somebody took my information, I need to stop everything, and they'll guide you through it. But the police department is your first stop to go ahead and make sure that they're on notice so they can alleviate more people from getting scammed. Well, I love that you said, don't be ashamed. Don't it be. literally happens to everybody. And I love that you said, I teach this program everywhere, and yet it almost happened to me. I think that's really important to our listeners because I don't care who you're talking to. Almost everybody has a story where they almost did or they, in fact, did fall for something. So I love that you mentioned yeah. that. And, and so in our, our line of work daily with the senior companies, we are uh, working with and assisting folks that have already gone through cognitive decline, in many cases enhanced memory care, dementia, mm -hmm. Parkinson's, et cetera. So can a family member speak on their behalf once they learn of such a thing? Because as I know you've spoken in the past, they have rights inside of the community just because it's not, you know, a one, two, three, four, five Smith Street, they still have rights. Can the can the even if they're not a power of attorney, can they Report bring it. about action? everybody, everybody, anybody has a right to advocate for anybody. To be heard though legally is this. Number one, we do have guardians that take care of the physical needs of the individual, like your mom or dad or whoever it is that you're taking care of. Guardians take care of the physical need, which is, so that we're really clear, food, clothing, shelter, you know, making sure that their medications are monitored and taken care of. Then the conservator takes care of the monetary needs. Conservator takes care of the financial aspects. In the case of somebody speaking out, it just has to be somebody who has actually been there, what the individual says. I think they've been scammed. This is what happened. Let's face it, everybody, not everybody has all day, all night to take care of their mother, their father, or their loved one. That's right. So you bring in a caregiver, and a caregiver you're supposed to trust because they're supposed to provide the care for that loved one. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they are now becoming another crime individual that's led into your house. Unless the agencies are bonded, insured, and licensed, licensed by the state, you should hide all your valuables in the house if they're yes. coming into your house because your home is your castle. And at the same time, set rules and boundaries for these individuals in your house. What that means is you're not allowed to go anywhere but within the kitchen, the family room, and the bedroom. Nowhere else. Number two, I want to make sure that when you come here, okay, you know you're here to work and not peek around the corners. I'll tell you what I see is this. It is an angel that does these caregiving. And sometimes the individuals that get in this profession, even though they don't have any criminal history, even though they you know, look like on paper the way they are, 
The reality is you should always, always, always check to see if the agency is licensed, which means they have been vetted by the state. Mm -hmm. Two is that they're insured, that they have insurance for unforeseeable circumstances. And lastly, what are the limits in there? But in bonding, it means if you're missing something, if they're bonded, they got to pay for the things or thing that is missing. Ask the questions because you're leaving them in care of somebody vulnerable, somebody that's subject to or could be a scam. So essentially it's see something, say something. Oh, I love that. That's what I tell everybody because if you don't say it, then who's going to know about it? And if they don't know about it, it's going to happen to somebody else, and we want to prevent that from happening. And because the seniors, uh, when they're in a senior living community, they're around the personnel of the community much more than they are their family. So likewise, because a lot of senior community personnel will see this video. It's, It's our primary function. So if you see something, say something. You have an obligation and responsibility to look over the person. Well, and a lot of in people those in those units. communities are, uh, they are mandated reporters. Sure. I mean, so, I, through so, my license, I'm a mandated reporter. If, if I get caught not reporting, then I'm in trouble. Yeah, we put that law into place. <laughs> is that an accessory? No. <laughs> it could be. Hey, Paul. No, I'm saying, is that an accessory? After the fact. Yes. After the yes. fact. <laughs> Let's put it to the reality is this. There should be mandatory reporters. I mean, physicians should be able to be held harmless to make a report just to have the right people. Let's say if it's a child, Child Protective Services will take it away from there. If it's an adult, Adult Protective Services. And if they're licensed, Adult Protective Services must, not shall, but must, must, which means shall, put the Licensing Bureau, Lara, on notice to say, hey, we had this incident. Somebody better take a look and see how many other license mishaps have occurred here. People saying, I got bumps on mom's head. Uh, I got black and blue marks all over dad. How did this happen? Nobody seems to have an answer. Mm -hmm. So if they are making these reports and they're put in files, at least we know that there's a history of what has happened. But, you know, the prosecutor's office did something else, which I'm very proud of. Not only did we make our own pamphlet of the units that we have in Macomb County, but also what those units do. And it's all online, so if you don't pick one of these up, We also have there's no excuse for elderly abuse and getting to the bruises as well as the bumps on on mom's head. Let's face it. There is no excuse for elderly abuse. Somebody who can't take care of themselves, why would they be even more of a prey? It's exactly this, like you said, memory care. So we have facilities, facilities for everybody out there that says independent senior living, assisted senior living, memory care senior living. We have this because we know that as we get older, the body and the mind need to work as one. If I can't work my body, then sometimes my mind's going to give up on me. Don't let that happen. Keep your mind activated. Keep in in shape the best you can, what you have. And on top of it, eat well. Make sure that you're enjoying your life because you deserve it. And the last thing is make sure you get some pre-planning involved, Paul. You know, I mean, this is very important. Leave your children with less to do because it's your estate, your, your, your wealth. Mm -hmm. Even if it's small, make those arrangements. Tell in a note when you're sitting there what you want, not why you want it, but how you can get things done when you're alive that make it less burdensome for the ones that are going to take care of you. Sure. And this is so informative, folks. There's literally every possible phone number you can imagine where you can contact and get help. Uh, Peter, can you share uh, your website uh, domain address with Um, our listeners and viewers? It's right there. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) It's prosecutor.macombgov.org. That's prosecutor.macombgov.org. Or just Google Macomb County Prosecutor's Office, and it will just lead you to the website. And then it will have all, all of these uh, that you see here of units that we, we have. We have a total of over 70 prosecutors in Macomb County. There's roughly almost a million people in Macomb County, and we service about 24,000 crimes a year. Wow. And you know what? It's a lot of work, and we do our best. That's with approximately uh, 28 law enforcement agencies. So when you, Paul, had talked about what municipalities, what Townships, villages, and cities. 
we got it all. And we're also on the water because of Lake St. Clair. The bottom line is, if somebody sees something, please say something. And if it's a scam against the most cherished generation, loved generation, and or the greatest generation, our seniors must say something. And it's important to do it so it'll stop anybody else that's vulnerable. Absolutely. And as a Macomb uh, County resident myself, I, my wife, we appreciate everything you do. Thanks. And most importantly for the seniors, which I know as a big family for you and a big family for me. Italian family. Absolutely. You know my what mom, that 100%, means. 100%, yes. My we mom, brought you into this world. Right. We'll take you out of this world. <laughs> my mom, one of 12. So, uh, so Sounds thank like you, you heard that a lot then. <laughs> thank you so much for what you do. Thank this you. is very near and dear to us as it's our everyday. And you have a, a plate full of so many things. It's awesome that you're putting this at the forefront of so much of what you yeah. do. I want to make sure before we close it up, Everybody, this is in your libraries. This is at your city halls, in your police departments. If you didn't get out and have a physical scams you know, seminar, please go pick it up. Share it with a loved one. It could save you a lot of time and aggravation. And we'll have it here in our office. Uh, and we'll have it up on all six or seven of our websites as well yeah. for you to easily access. Definitely, we can link it in the bottom of this podcast yeah. link for sure. For sure. Thanks. Yeah. Peter, thank you so much for appreciate joining us today, uh, taking time out of your busy day. We appreciate it. Always a it. pleasure. And you know what? Be safe. Don't be sorry. Thank you, folks. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Senior Podcast Show. This episode contained information on how to prevent, recognize, and report elder fraud. If you believe you are a victim of fraud or know a senior who may be, regardless of financial loss and you are not under imminent threat, report the fraud to the FBI's IC3.gov. The Department of Justice provides an elder fraud hotline to help with resources and with filing complaints to the IC3. You can contact them at 833-FRAUD-11. That's 833-372-8311.